Hello everyone, in today's video we'll talk about Google Charts and custom JavaScript. In today's video I will show you how to create a graph from data which is retrieved through an API and at the you have to create two custom JavaScript components. I will copy and paste that so you don't have to do that. You can stop the video or I will publish the components on the marketplace so you just can download the number and directly use them in your projects if you have any questions or comments leave them in the comments below and let me show you how the application is going to look like today we're going to create a one page which has multiple components we have a top component which is navigation we have a second container what is the title? Title. We have then another component, what actually is the graph itself. And then we have four different containers which have statistics about our list. The next step is to set up the connection uh, with the Mocha, Moccacino um, API. So how do we do that? At REST API, this will be, I call users, a list of user data for an uh, Analytics and that's the resource. We go to a collection, we take it from users, and the item, the response key is also users. So let's test that. There you can see we get our JSON response with period, mobile, web, and boat. It's just a simple JSON structure. So there is this is a list with multiple objects in there and the objects. So let's create the schema from that. So there we go. We now have a list with uh, all these properties. Let's save that one. Let's now build our page framework so we are having one, uh, four different areas so let's get those two three four so that's four of them let's name them so we can easily find them later on so the first one is header the second one we will be creating is title then we have the graph and the last container is the content and we will save this one now let's start the first thing we're going to do is to create a header the header will contain uh, two icons so that's icon number one which is uh, you can see here they exactly this is um since uh, this is july 12 when i record this there is a new version of the icon set um, you can now actually uh, there's much more easy to search and there's actually more icons available now also so it's a bigger list um, I still use the uh, font awesome and I'm looking for back for my back error so that's one it's the uh, Chevron left here so let's change the style of this directly also this icon so we'll edit this one and let's change that color to black and we'll increase the Uh, 
I think this is perfect. Let's leave it like that. So let's overwrite this and let's save this. So let's give it a name. We call it back. Then let's duplicate this one. So we get a second one that will be dots. And we take the three dots. Again, we'll take the same one. That is fine. And we call them icon dots. And now what I want to do is to take this one on a horizontal line. So I go to layout and I will put them on a horizontal line. I will then put them in the middle and I want to completely put them to the side. So the next step is to create the title. So let's close this, take a title. We'll take the title field and we put it in here. And the item is just going to be title. We're going to replace this with user counts mobile. We're going to go to the style. We're going to update the standard style. We leave it black. Um, change this one to title large. Title large. We're going to change this to primary font. And we'll take this back to 500. I think that is perfect and we'll save that one as well. Now let's make the API available on the page. We can go to variable. We then go to data variable. That's how we connect a page data variable with a data variable. We use users. We create single collection. Um, it had all of this. I'm going to remove it because I would like to have it more control over it. So I actually can remove it. So I can just by selecting everything and delete it. And I'm going to call it user and press save. So let's go back to the view. Let's give ourselves a bit more space. I now want to install the uh, Google char chart component. Um, they are not standard, they're not installed yet, so I have to go to the component and I look for chart. And there is the one, it's the called D3JS Google Chart. And I just press the install button. After I've done this, I can then drag and drop that into the graph, and this uh, gave me a um, chart in the um, on, on my page. Let's save it. To go to create a Google chart, so we have our component on the screen, which creates our graph like this. October, December, something like this. We require two things, which is data. So what's in here? So that's one input, which is data. So that goes into the table and also what I call configuration. So the second step is configuration. configuration. In here, it's things like for example, what type of chart do you want? Um, the size. So all those kind of things, all the attributes of the uh, graph. And what I do is I package both ones into a custom app guy for JavaScript. And those both go in there and it's the same for this one. And that will go into there also. So now let's create the, we need for this particular component, 
as two as a chart function and as the chart data. So let's create those two variables. So those are page variables. One of them is called func as a string. That's a text. We're not going to do anything. No initial value. And the second one is called chart data. This will store uh, the chart data. It's going to be a list. This will be a list and that will be a list again and allow multiple types. One is text and the other one is a number. So I have a list in the list and it could be a text or it could be a number. No default, nothing. We're just going to save. The first custom JavaScript I'm going to create is one for to set up the component. So let's go to custom JavaScript. We mount it and we say create custom uh, create create chart component component okay let's dive into the javascript let's remove that part and let's control v our text in there i'm going to explain what it does um, we do not have any inputs we do have one input it's not called result it is actually called function as a string. So we're going to add that one. So the output is simple. There is an object and there's a function as a string. Okay. So let's quickly go. You can find some more information here. Um, I will paste the code also in the, in the description. So how does this thing works? Um, this is a function where it creates uh, the chart, so it's a JavaScript function. And then, so the first thing I do is I'm going to create a function and I'm going to convert that into a string. And that function I will then output as a return. And that will be something, this is a short, that one you see there is a short for something which is the same as function dot and then whatever st string is behind that. So that's a short for that. Okay, so when I come in, I call this particular function, which you can see here, which is called chart executor. So the first thing I do, I have to load all the core chart the core chart functionality i set on load callback so when it's loaded call this particular function so when the chart is going call this one so the first thing i need to do is to get the data that the chart data you see it like here it's actually this particular data comes from a function um, what we create later on then we set the options say the width of 80% um, uh, the chart will be 320 pixels high uh, we do not have a legend we set the background color we have animation so it looks a bit nicer um, these are the grid lines so these are the vertical grid lines it's all about grid lines color I want to have like short so it's going to be like 20k 30k 40k and we set the textiles then at the same time we set the horizontal axis, uh, the, the horizontal axis uh, color, textiles blue is, is bold, all both of them, 
and we set 20%. So this is the, this is, this is the, sp the margin between the different bars. If you want to know more again, please check this out, this website, you can see all of them. And this is how you, this is in this case, I'm going to create a column chart. We can do a pie chart. There's lots of other things, but he's, this is where you set uh, what type of chart you want to generate. The next step is then to add the variable. So we said we have a page variable, which is function as a string. And we want to connect that to the output. So how do we do that? We go to output from other variable, create chart component, and we do function as a, as a screen. So we create here, it's like the output is a, is, a, is, a, is a string, is a function as a string, and then we stay, save that into a variable. So the next step is now st start um, loading the, um, the, 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 the API data. How do we do that? we use a flow function so we connect the two together and we'll take the user one it only want to select that's the resource name so there's only one we'll take the, this one and we save that so that end outputs in yes it works no it doesn't work so let's then take that and update the data variable so we'll connect them connect them together and then the next thing we do is it's the user one so the data variable is the user one and we can now connect it again from the output so it comes out the get record collection and then we select this one and we save down so quickly charge is created we set the variable out of that, then we read the record collection and we store the user's variables in a, in, um, in a collection called users. So now create the another um, piece of JavaScript and here we're gonna manipulate what the API, what comes in. So um, manipulate or oh, actually what we're gonna do is actually gonna generate we're gonna generate a chart table that's what we're gonna do here so let's double click on it let's remove this one let's copy and paste so the first thing we're going to create is we create a new property called users, which we link to our data variable called users. So now with this, we get the user data from the API. So we have this particular object, JavaScript object, and we'll take the user, the user attribute from that we then next step is then we create our first um, yeah is our our first series the series is the mobile series style means I can set later on the um, the fill of my uh, row and that's the name and that's the unique ID I created X okay so we're gonna loop through one by one to our user table, which contains a number of items, and one of them is period, the other one is mobile. So we have a record here, which contains period and mobile. We're gonna push period first, which is, is our um, horizontal axis, and we put that with our vertical axis in, our, in, in the series for mobile, which we call, and then we put it into a uh, use them as a number, and we make sure it is a number. I make sure make sure we pass it as always a number, and we give it a color also, and we push that in this output table, and yep, is a result. 
so we need to make sure we match up the the table we made already so let's do that so it's list in there we have another list and you can see that so we have a list inside there's another list here you can see this here and that could be two things let's remove this one so that could be two things so it could be a text or it could be a number yeah and so again input users we process it we create a new format what can be read by, by the charts by the component but for, for the, the chart component and we output it out of the function and we press update now we need to store that in our page variable so we go to page variable we look for the page variable which is chart data which is correct and it comes from the generate and there's the result and we'll save it as we continue our journey now we have to link those the table plus uh, the function which generates how the um, how the chart looks like so the only thing we have to do now is to link them together so we have these two page variables that's a function as a string we save that one and the other one the chart data is also a page variable and that's now the chart data and mix them together so now we have them um, I've looked at I can't find any help about the styles here I've looked for I don't know what exactly what this means and the same for this one I have trouble understanding what it does there's no anywhere any help for this so maybe somebody can help me and write in the comments exactly what it means I don't know exactly what it does but um, so yeah so let's um, clean up let's make the design a bit bit nicer so I'm gonna just quickly press the layout I'm gonna add uh, 16 on both sides and that's the same for this one so we do 16 on horizontal so 16 here and 60 on the other side also um, I'm gonna just take this bit out a bit I think it's a bit too much there so the bottom gap I'm gonna go to looks a bit better okay so press save and let's check on the mobile and there we have a nice looking graph colored and uh, with everything on there um the only thing what i would like to do is you can see it when i make a change so let's go back to here i'm just going to put a spinner i'm going to show the spinner so when it's loading so let's put that one there so it's to show the spinner and then when it's finished so after i've done everything I'm going to hide the spinner again and I'm going to also hide the spinner when hide the spinner there also when I make an error so if, we, if I save this one you can't really see I just want to show you what happens now if I now save it You'll see the spinner and then you see nicely loading up so yeah so i want to create some extra fields here just to show a couple of stats about what's happening here so um so let's create so let's create that um Let's create um, 
a uh, container item and we're going to have multiple ones so let's start off creating that and we call that container item container item and it contains of two different things we have on the left which have the name of the property so field name and then we duplicate that one on the other hand we have the count or the number field number so we have those two in there we have a title and this the example i start off with is a year to date maximum users and then we have a, i'm just going to close this down give you a bit more space you can see what i'm doing so let's just move a bit up and then let me go copy that one Control C, Control V. So that is the name. So that, that is item name, and this is item count. And that count is, for example, sixty thousand. Um, I want to have both on the same row, so let's do that. Layout, layout, and horizontal. Put some on one row. I want also. I want to have this one fit the content. So that's one thing, and then I would like this one to. Let's change the style. Let's take that one. Let's do edit. Yes, you tie to XXS. Let's use the secondary font for this one. It looks great. I think that one is just going to go to Sometimes it doesn't work, the 400, um, I'm just going to click secondary again, and then you can then click, I think it's a bit of a bug there, but that's fine like this. I then overwrite it. So that's this one here, it's content heading, and I use exactly this one the same, which is this one, and now I have both of them here. So I want to have four, four of these items. So what I can do, so let's, so that one, let's put the layout as we done with the other ones also with 16. And that is 16 also. So let's make from this one, Let's make it a component. So how do we create a component of this? Go to properties. So um, let's create content. It's, it's a button here, sometimes you miss it. There it is. So let's use that one and then we create the component we say you want to contain item. yes that's what I'm going to name it so so now we have the so let's just now create um, some properties because we want to change we want to make this uh, flexible so how do we do that we go to properties we go to here and we're gonna add 
two properties. Property one we call name and we call here is item name and we're gonna link it to the item name content. So now it's a link together and headline is fine. I'm okay with that. Then the next one again property this is number then we'll take it from here or it's called account count its headline is not it's 61,300 for example so now we have these two one uh, two properties created from a component they then disappear here which is not really good stuff so now it's connected to item name so let's exit this and now fill this two items see these two items i've created here so one both are static ones so one is called year to date maximum users and that one again again that's one and there we go we took 63,000 I think I made a small mistake so let's go back to don't use this one because that's specifically for this particular component it's like you will override the default values so I need to go to the original one once I click here then I go to properties and um, I didn't correctly name it so let's call it item count and I save that one then I go back here I go back to that one I make see this property number so that's wrongly assigned I press save and now there it is so let me double check item name which is correct so both of now are correct so let's press exit and we'll save that one so now I would like to change the style of this so I go here press edit so it's a default style that's okay I just want to change the padding so that will be 24 24 that will be 16 16 And that one is 24 again. And I also want to do a border effect. So we'll take a, let's take a static color. Let's take, go a bit like this. So, and then we do a 155, 156. One six seven, and we'll make it transparent. So, oh, to go there. A border style is a solid. It's one, but I don't want to make it. I don't want to do the top. So one, one, one. Yeah. Great, I overwrite and I go exit. And what I don't like is this one. So actually I'm gonna remove those that we do because I don't like them. I wanna take them like that. So this is perfect. And 
let's save and now have a quick look how that would look and you can see the little thing down there perfect so let's do that first calculation so how do we do that so we go to properties we go to this one we're going to use a formula for done and the formula we're going to use is the following so we first are going to do a map press enter so we first have to have a list and our list is our uh, data variables and users so that's the users and what I want to do is from this one I only want to have the mobile so this gives me a list of own if list so it's to the thousand for thousand of these ones I would like to pick up the maximum so how do I do that? I'm just gonna copy this one, gonna throw it away. And there is a function called max. And you have to have values and the value is a list. So I have the list. See, and it gives me now the highest value. Now I want to nicely format this also. So I'm gonna remove this again and I have as a function called formalized local so no that's not the one I need localized decimal so that's a number so that's our number our local let's make it the we used English version also used English for we want to have zero and zero so we don't want anything now you can see this is the result of this so we have a nicely formatted number and we're going to press save. And now if I look, now you can see 61,000 is the maximum. So now the next, the next row, that's very really simple. We just copy that one. We're going to remove the the top gap because we don't want that so we'll take this one we just have to go here we just have to take this one and now it's minimum minimum user and we'll use the same one only then there's another which is called minimum there we go now we have the minimum number we'll press it and We'll save it. And now we can check the design again. And now you can see the lowest number on the list is 20,000. The next one is exactly the same. So we copy it again. We move the top. We clear the values. We take the properties. And this way we'll, we'll take the year to day average. Average and we'll go here and there is one called average There we go and now we have the average and we press this one and we'll Save that one And now if we check again and there we go, that's the average instead of having the maximum use i want to know which period is is the maximum so how do we do that one again the principle is exactly the same again top one we clear the values again go here we'll change this one to year to day max period okay so now let's remove this one and let's use a different one 
um, let's use what is called reduce. It reduces a list to a single value, yeah, and based on a couple of criteria. So, for example, here you can say um, if the price is smaller than something, do something. So, let's build one of those ones. So, let's first start with. Okay, so let's start. Okay, we're gonna get the we want to get the largest. We want to get the largest. Um, our and we want to use the user. So that's step number one. So let's take this whole. yeah so that's let's actually move this outside because we're going to use these particular variables inside so yeah so we have the largest end user so it is data that's the table we're going to use then we're going to do a if So the if condition, if user dot mobile is greater than the largest, is the dot mobile. So what do we then do? Then it become user or it become the largest. And I only want to have period. So if I have reduced only to one, I only don't want to have how many users or how many mobile, how many users. I just want to get the period. So we'll save that. So that's in this case, January. We'll save. And then we'll check our app. And you can now see YTD max period is now equal to April. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, please leave them below in the comment sections. If you like this video, if you think it's valuable to you, subscribe if you want to see more. I'm only going to say stay curious and see you in the next video.